Welcome back to the final part of Lecture 15. In the last part of this lecture, we saw how Brownian motion and shear stress can act in opposition with one another to manipulate the level of packing in a system and hence produce shear thinning. We saw that this was only relevant to colloidal systems. However, it must be noted that shear thinning can be observed for a whole range of suspensions, not just colloidal suspensions. We're not going to go into the detailed mechanism of why in this course, but however, these descriptions are widely available in the literature should you be interested. What we're going to do in this final part of Lecture 15 instead is to look at another physical phenomenon and relate that back to changes in packing fraction. The physical phenomenon that we're going to look at is the presence of a yield stress in suspensions. It's commonly experimentally observed that if our packing fraction, that's phi over phi max, is greater than about 0.8, then yield stress behaviour can be found. Now, we're going to introduce an expression, Wildermuth and Williams, that allows us to calculate maximum packing fraction as a function of shear stress. We're then going to combine that expression with krieger doherty and see the relative viscosity prediction that results from that and relate that to yield stress behaviour. So, here on the board is a graph that plots out relative viscosity as a function of particle volume fraction for krieger doherty The krieger doherty expression is there on the board as well as a reminder. And remember what we saw was that as we approach the maximum volume fraction of particles, phi max, the relative viscosity starts to asymptote off to infinity. The curve that I've put on the board is for spheres. So phi max in this case is for hexagonal close packing. Phi max is 0.74 and the intrinsic viscosity is 2.5. Remember how we can get that from the Brownian hard spheres result. Now, the region of interest for yield stress is now highlighted. So the gap between those two horizontal lines is where phi over phi max is greater than 0.8. And we can see that this captures that asymptotic behaviour to relative viscosity going to infinity. So let's remind ourselves of a mechanism. We said that shear can order particles. No matter what diameter those particles are, there will be an ordering effect. And we can go from, say, random close packing to hexagonal close packing. The expression that is now on the board, Wildermuth and Williams, allows us to calculate phi max as a function of shear stress. It effectively assumes that you can transition from one packing fraction, in this case 0.64, random close packing, to another packing fraction, hexagonal close packing, 0.74, and that transition is controlled by the amount of stress applied to a system. And we can see that in the expression there on the board, on the right-hand side, we have our two maximum packing fractions limit. Phi max at tor naught is random close packing. Phi max at tor infinity, in this case, is hexagonal close packing. So those are our two packing fraction limits. And we can see that on the far right-hand side of this expression, there's a one over 1 plus a tau to the minus b term. Tau is a stress applied to the system. a and b are parameters that allow the tuning of the model to experimental data. So it gives us a way of calculating maximum packing fraction as a function of shear stress. So let's have a look at a plot. Here on the board are two y-axes and an x-axis. The primary y-axis is our relative viscosity. Our secondary y-axis is our maximum packing fraction. Both of these parameters are going to be plotted as a function of shear stress. Let's start by looking at the maximum packing fraction as a function of shear stress behaviour due to Wildermuth and Williams. The shape of the curve that's on the graph now is probably expected when you looked at the form of the equation of Wildermuth and Williams. And it describes a transition between our low stress maximum packing fraction, 0.64, and our high stress maximum packing fraction, 0.74. So that's that shear ordering effect again. When we combine the phi max prediction with krieger doherty perhaps unsurprisingly, what we see is a variation in viscosity that allows the description of a high viscosity at low stress, because the maximum packing fraction is low at low stress, a shear thinning type behaviour, or maybe a yielding type behaviour, that then transitions out to a high stress viscosity plateau. 
So the parameters used in Krieger Doherty and Wildermuth and Williams are there on the graph. And if we concentrate on the low stress segment of this plot, we can see that the viscosity increase is decades with decades decrease of, sh of shear stress. And if we think that solids are basically fluid systems with a high viscosity, or at least could be modeled that way, what we have here perhaps is a description of a yield stress. Now, we can sharpen these curves or flatten these curves depending on our choice of parameters A and B, but if we wish to capture in a model, a nice easy model, yield behavior, this is one way in which it can be done. So a few key points. It's commonly experimentally observed that suspensions have the presence of a yield stress when the packing fraction, the ratio between phi and phi max, is greater than about 0.8. One of the relationships that one can use to describe the variation of phi max as a function of stress is that due to Wildermuth and Williams. If this expression is combined with Krieger Doherty, we get a model that describes relative viscosity as a function of stress and can be used to model the presence of a yield stress.